Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So uh, I apologize, there was no video yesterday. We had a, a crazy uh, storm in New Jersey. It was like, at some point it was like 80 mile an hour winds. I don't know if I got that aggressive, but I was outside with my daughter uh, playing some uh, playing some ball. And all of a sudden it got pitch black at night, literally at night, light night at around 4 o'clock, 4.30 and literally wiped out my internet yesterday, finally got it back around 7.30. At that time, I was already just exhausted, so I apologize for that. So uh, let's talk about the market today. Um, very, very odd day. Again, this is one of those days that I think the scoreboard, uh, again, doesn't uh, do it any justice. If, if you look at uh, the indexes today, and you'll see uh, quickly what I mean. If you didn't actively participate in the day today, uh, Q's above the five-day moving average, uh, very, very constructive. Uh, the Russell, uh, represents a lot of the smaller to mid cap names uh, above the five day moving average. The S&P, uh, we'll use uh, the SPIs as a proxy. Again, uh, broke out above the 200 day moving average four or five days ago. And now it's kind of a moving a nice uptrend. So you're not going to get a really clean view of uh, what we saw today, but it, it was a very, very odd day. There was a lot of aggression uh, early, okay? And there was very, very much weakness in the afternoon. And it wasn't like one of those things that stocks just got exhausted and they burnt out and they went lower. There was just something wrong. There's something in baseball uh, that's called an in-between hop. Okay, for all you guys who uh, watch baseball and uh, play baseball, you kind of know. When, when the batter swings the ball, right, they swing and the ball is hit, uh, usually to an infielder, right? Well, it's going to be to an infielder. Usually to the third baseman or the, you know, the shortstop, the second baseman or the first baseman. The ball is not hit hard enough, so it could be a lineup, you know, a, a, a pop-up, okay, and it's not hit soft enough enough for a ground ball. It's like right in between. So you need to kind of make up your mind within a second. Are you going to dive for it, right, to try to catch it on a fly, or are you going to wait for the stock for for, uh, for the ball to drop to pick it up and see if you have enough time to throw the, the runner out of first base? And I felt like that's the way the market traded today. Um, it, for, for, for yesterday, kind of rewinding, if you looked at what the market told us yesterday, at least told us, the Dow was up 500 points, right? And you can make an incredible argument yesterday that three or four names carry the action yesterday. Boeing, uh, ZM into earnings, squared the continuation of its 84.20 break uh, breakout from the previous day, and I forgot what the other one was. Okay, it doesn't make a difference. So if you looked at the action yesterday, was kind of brutal, right? Very, very slow, especially towards the second part of the day. And again, I didn't have an, a chance to kind of echo my thought process going into today's day, but I kind of felt that, you know what, there was going to be better value today because the way the market's been trading, especially in the last several weeks, when you have a very, very weak and uninterested market, like kind of what we saw yesterday from the broader tape, the next day you usually kind of get a wake-up call. And that's kind of what we did in the morning. And you saw some pretty good value in the morning. And then things stopped, right? Things, things really stopped. And it wasn't one of those scenarios, it stopped and the volume dried up it stopped and bids kind of went away. And the problem with this afternoon's action was, again, when you look at the indexes, the market did not call for a sell signal, okay? Uh, many stocks that got hit, well, at least the word hit is a very, very aggressive word. Most stocks that kind of came in were the same stocks that had aggressive buying. And that was a little bit unnerving. And it's something kind of for us to watch for tomorrow. Now, again, the odd part is when you look at most names, okay, and we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. When you look at most names, most names are just really healthy, right? Really, really healthy. And again, you can make an argument. Amazon had a big move, uh, went to this 25, you know, 2502 area, actually went to 2507. There was a nice pivot on Amazon earlier uh, this morning and just kind of came in. You can make an argument. Uh, then NVIDIA had a really, really nice run and then came in. This was actually... Uh, you know, actually, it was a pretty, really pretty good trade there as well. Uh, Netflix as well attempted to get above uh, supply, went up a little bit, and then came in. So you can make all these cases, right? But the problem is if you look at the companies that are predominantly controlling the action right now, 
And this is where you should really, again, especially if you don't trade beta, this is when you really have to do your homework. It's the stocks that are coming in off the bottom that are really irrelevant areas of trading, mostly kind of investing. And when you look at names, for example, like for example, I just want to give you an example for something that like I'm watching tomorrow. Usually I, you know, I, I kind of leave for the beta off. But if you look at stocks like this, right? For example, like an NAV, right? A, a stock that, you know, had a big move, came right back in. You're seeing a lot of names and a lot of setups that look like this. And although there's absolutely nothing wrong with a setup like this, I went through a lot of charts tonight, okay, a lot. And, and I didn't just go through beta. I went through a lot of names. And most names that I, I see that are okay, okay, that are pretty good, that are worth considering, it's nothing that I would even look at. Because again, a, st a stock like this, although, you know, it looks good and if it confirms uh, $28 has a shot to go to 30, it's not something that I trade. It's not something that interests me. It's, it's not enough volatility for me. There's not enough true range for me. It's something that you, you know, if I'm getting into, I'm going to be fighting with this damn thing for literally 20 cents for six hours. So it's not really my cup of tea. So I started looking at a lot of charts today and they all resembled a chart like this. I mean, the stocks that were strong resemble this. And, you know, names like Picard, uh, and although Picard, for example, uh, is, you know, a good looking chart, right? A really good looking chart. But again, look look at the ranges where the stock goes, right? And you can make an argument this thing looks like it wants to break out, and that's great. And the stocks that look okay for tomorrow are all looking like this. And if you look at stocks that are starting to break down, right, that went from basically potential breakout to breakdown, you're getting names like Netflix. You're getting names like Roku, right? You're getting names like Netflix. You're getting names like Roku. Tesla, millions and millions of dollars, right? 950s, 960s, 1000s, 1100s. We've been talking about this in nausea for three days, right? We've been talking about that 900 level, 910 level, not 899, not 898, not 888, not all these. Uh, technical analysis, technical analysis. So what's bothering me today, okay, number one, a lot of names that are supposed to be strong, that was supposed to follow through, they didn't. What also is bothering me, the market is still being bid up literally by the Dow stocks. Boeing, monster. Nobody could take away anything from Boeing. Boeing was huge yesterday, had another big move today. So nobody's taking away from the specific actions of specific stocks. And there's nothing right now that you could turn on and say, well, my alarms are going off, my antennas are going off, there's something wrong with the market. But if you're trading the market, you saw exactly what happened today in the morning. Things went really, really up aggressively and really fast, right? Uh, BYND had a, you know, BYND, uh, Boeing, uh, NVIDIA, right? Big, big moves. Amazon, really, really big moves. And as fast as the way they went up, the faster the wind went down. So there's something wrong, okay? There's absolutely something wrong. And the most important part is when you're getting into a market that you feel that something is wrong. And again, something wrong doesn't mean up or down. Something wrong means the structural balance is very, very, uh, at least in danger, a possible danger for really, really hurting your specific trading style. Now, for me, again, I trade channels, okay? Um, I'm very, very conscious of what's going on in the world with the rioting, um, with the 40 million unemployment, with, if, again, if you look at pictures, okay, if you look at pictures from Midtown Manhattan, right, Fifth Avenue, and you look at all the businesses there, Prada, Gucci, Saks Fifth Avenue, Tiffany's, right, they're all boarded up, okay, every single one of them is all boarded up, okay, and now we are getting closer to that reopening America, right, everybody reopening America, where is everybody reopening to, where are you going, so I get the whole point, right, I get the whole point of this market is very, very close for any type of bad news to really punch it in the face. So I get it could happen at any time. And again, for the last two months, we've been seeing incredible market action to the long side. The problem is this could happen at any time. Again, we say this over and over again. If it feels wrong, it's probably wrong, okay? And the last thing you should be doing is pushing pushing and pushing and pushing at levels that you're trying to predict where a stock is going to go next. Again, technical analysis is there for a guide. Again, there is no room for interpretation. When I hear, when I've been talking about Tesla, macro move, 900 sneaky, 910, 900 sneaky, 910. Somebody will email me and say, 
Hey, Dan, I'm long the thousand calls. What do you think I should do with them? Well, why are you in them in the first place? Okay, stop guessing. Stop thinking. It's the most frustrating thing when people take technical analysis and completely remove the, tangib the tangibility of it actually existing. Okay, when a stock needs to take out a macro move, guess what? It needs to take out a macro move. Okay, it's not there just because for you to enter at prices that you shouldn't be entering. But that's a whole conversation. That's a whole different conversation. Um, the more I think about it, the more agitated I'm getting right now. But okay, let's move that away. But I think what's happening is, and we're starting to see this based on the really second, third, fourth tier names kind of coming off a of bottom. And at the same time, really aggressive vehicles that had big run-ups, but yet they couldn't push forward over supply. That's a big red flag because the last group that always goes up is the septic tank, right? It's the stocks like this. Okay, it's really the stocks like this, the stocks that just couldn't get out of their way for months and months and months and months. And then they finally creep out right before the last gasp of breath. And guess what? They usually probably right, wind up coming right back down. So these are a lot of issues I'm watching going into tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of names that are close, very, very close, confirming downside channels, um, very close. I mean, we're talking about five day moving average, the 10 day moving average names, very, very close. So I, I think tomorrow uh, could, be a na uh, could be a day that if we get a gap up, especially, and these stocks get stuffed into supply and they start confirming the five, 10 day moving average, it's a wrap. It's an absolute wrap. We had exactly the same conversation last Wednesday when I turned around, I said, man, I'm 100% sell bias. Well, I'm not 100% sell bias because again, we're not getting that 100% sell bias signal going into tomorrow, but damn it, there's something wrong. And when there's something wrong, the last thing you should be doing is quote unquote, looking for breakouts, okay? Looking for breakouts on names that again, 99% of the time probably shouldn't be traded because they're not tradable. Um, so I think tomorrow is going to be a very, very tricky, at least opening. I think we're going to have to wait till like the 10 o'clock channel, the first candle of the day to get a little bit more clarity. The most important thing is stop thinking. Okay. Traders are so smart. Everybody's so smart. I'm the king of the idiots, but everybody's so smart. Everybody's thinking and anticipating. Don't anticipate. Okay. You're not paid to anticipate. You're not paid to think. Just wait, wait for that confirmation. If it comes, you put your money at risk with sensibility, okay, sensibility and high probability of the stock working. When it doesn't, you don't guess what happens next, okay? We're not that smart. I've been talking about this for years. If you're guessing, okay, you are going to fail nine out of 10 times. Again, we're not Miss Cleo, we don't have a crystal ball. You're either waiting or you're out of this business. It's just the reality. And again, these words are not supposed to, you know, to make you nervous. They're supposed to put the fear of God in you. Okay. So stop thinking, stop you know, anticipating, stop overreacting. Again, we're not that smart going into tomorrow. Again, you know, I'm going to be 50, 50 sell bias, right? 50, 50 sell bias. Um, I want to see how things play out tomorrow morning. Uh, again, I'm not in any rush Fridays. Uh, Fridays are, you know, usually a very, very aggressive day but I am a little bit sell bias. I really am. So based on what I saw today, uh, again, things shift very, very quickly in the market. So you have to shift with it. But again, you have to have an opinion and wait for that opinion to play out. So it kind of here is kind of like uh, what we saw today, the, you know, pretty much a tale of two tapes. So uh, I was looking at NVIDIA to the downside, uh, obviously never got to the 346. I actually caught a really good pivot on the breakout, right? Waited for that breakout, caught the breakout. Uh, again, here are the levels we were watching. We've been watching the same levels now for three days, right? And although the buyers were coming in for the 950, the 1000, 1100, the 960 weeklies, right? Over and over and over again. It doesn't mean they're right, okay? They still need to confirm and they never confirm. You never put on your full position on anything, okay? Until it confirms macro. That's the whole point of having macro charts in front of you. Wait for that confirmation. Until that happens, you got nothing, okay? You only have a trade setup. You don't have a confirmation. Uh, goose, I still like, never confirmed. Uh, I still like this goose. Uh, Twitter, I still like, never confirmed. Uh, NKLA, not a big move. Uh, NKLA, uh, $38. 
Uh, you know, went up about a buck, you know, then came back in with a lot of the things as well. Uh, not really anything going on there. Uh, there's some big, again, th these are the you know, pretty big pivots here at the open. Uh, Amazon, uh, 24.89, 24.90. If it builds, you know, it could go. Again, I, I thought Amazon was going to get to, um, I thought Amazon was going to get to uh, 25.02, went to 25.07. Again, here is the pivot. Right here is the pivot. It got all through this. And it put up a really aggressive candle, and you say to yourself, "Man, these things are looking strong." Until all the bits crapped out. So again, always take money on the way up. Always use break even as you stop. Uh, Roku again, uh, 103, 20, 103. If it, if it builds below, can flush. Macro wise, it did the right thing. It's actually setting up really well for tomorrow. If you look at the 103, 20, it traded right down to 101.50. Now, why is that important? Right, double bottom for now. Right, why is that important? Because that is the low. Uh, from uh, the 27th tomorrow, if this thing starts cranking, especially below the 101 area, there's a shot, especially if they pull the plug, there's a shot this thing gets down to 97. So I really like uh, Roku if you took a good job there. Uh, Toll Brothers, again, nothing big there. Put up an initial move to 36 and a quarter. And again, this is the whole point of what I'm saying, guys. If you look at a chart on Toll Brothers, this is my whole point about stocks that are looking strong today. They all look like this, right? Like here is Toll Brothers, perfect example. 36, it went from 36 to 36 and a quarter, rolled over. It's the same thing as we've been talking about in the last few minutes. A lot of names that just kind of got like, destroyed, went sideways, and attempting to pick up their necks, and then they're getting stuffed. Again, this is what I'm seeing. This is a big, big red flag, especially uh, going into tomorrow's session. Uh, Boeing, again, monster of all monster. I mean, we saw everything today. We saw, uh, we saw the 190s. We saw the 195s. We saw the 200s. We saw the 210 calls just exploded. Uh, congratulations. I know a lot of you guys caught this trade really, really well. So here is the 10150 and just absolutely exploded, went all the way up to almost 189. Boeing is just an absolute monster, it continues to be a monster. Uh, so take on the way up, obviously a huge move there. Uh, Netflix, again, perfect example, 47.60.28. It went to like 28.78 and completely reversed, right? Again, here was a sneaky pivot on, on Tesla. Again, these are why these numbers are very specific. 896 sneaky, again, 900, 910, still big areas, traded to 895.75. You can see how specific these areas are. Uh, again, you can't anticipate a big position until things confirm. Uh, again, you know here was uh, you know here was Amazon. Uh, I said twenty five ten next supply trade twenty five oh seven. Uh, big move there. Uh, Nvidia. This was a really good trade. Uh, Nvidia two fifty three fifty needs to build three fifty five macro. Again, macro. That's the key word. Macro. That's the stock where it confirms daily. So here was the three fifty five. Right. I got long on this thing. It was a nice, really really nice move. Um, Really nice move here. So here's the 355, right? Here's the 355 macro. It took out the 355 macro and put up a $4 candle right away, right? Like right away. Again, that's the whole point of macro. Again, what I don't like is completely reversed just like everything else. That's why, again, the warning signs are there. Uh, BYND 138 needs to build. Again, exploded, absolutely exploded here. Uh, here was BYND, right? Here was BYND on the 138, this whole channel here, 138, 138, 138. And it went to 42, big, big move. And then look, look how easily it reversed right back down. Again, these are the warning signs, what I'm saying, going into tomorrow as well. Uh, NVIDIA exploding beyond, uh, beyond exploding. It actually went to 142 and change. Uh, sick move, right? Sick move. So look, it's very easy, okay? It's very easy to click a mouse, okay? Incredibly easy to click a mouse. It's very, very hard to click a mouse properly, okay? And again, I get a lot of you guys are still new traders. A lot of you guys are still trading two, three, four years. And the fear of missing out is going to get easier and easier every single year. It does. It becomes a lot easier. Everything about this business becomes easier. Managing position, getting rid of, of, of a bad hand, uh, taking a, cut, a paper cut, not turning it into a severed head, sitting on the sidelines when you, when you have to, pressing on the gas when you need to. These are all going to come. But again, it all stems back to technical analysis. And if you don't wait for that green light for the macro view to confirm, you're not going to be trading. These are the facts. Okay, guys. So again, ask me before you do it. It's very, very simple. It doesn't cost you any money to ask me my opinion. Okay. For all you guys who are, especially you guys are trading on the option side, you guys are fighting time. And think about this. Does it make any sense for you to buy, for example, a thousand call 
on Tesla if the stock can't get over 900. Just think about that, right? Think about that and you'll see the rationale behind it. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Tomorrow's Friday. Stay safe. Love your neighbor. God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.